Good morning, everyone. And welcome to St. Martin of Tours Catholic Parish. I'm Deacon Todd. I'd like to offer a special welcome to anyone who's visiting with us and another welcome to all of those who may have been traveling for the winter and are back. It's good to see your smiling faces again. And I want a special welcome to Laura Lai Sumner, who's going to make her first communion today. Yay! You're not usually that shy, Lorelei. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to, for our teaching moment this morning, I wanted to talk about a little bit about distinguishing deacons from priests, especially with our attire. Um, now, if we've talked about it in Mass. Um, mass, a deacon wears this thing that is called a dalmatic. It has um, sleeves on it, where the priest wears what's called a chasuble, which doesn't have sleeves. It's open on the side. Um, those, are, those go way back. Those are ancient uh, Roman uh, vestments. Um, we also see a, a deacon will wear a stole with the, his stole goes across his chest and where a priest will wear a stole that goes up and around his neck, much like Jesus has a stole on here today, okay? Um, those, are, those are liturgical vestments, but I'm going to talk about um, uh, vestments outside of liturgy, okay? A lot of times you'll see me wearing a shirt. I have a shirt that has a cross on it that has the deacon stole across it, okay? That's um, just something that deacons can wear. It's not actually required. It's just something that we prefer to do, and I kind of like to wear that. Just so you know, I'm deacon. No big deal. The bishop, though, has, has offered, or uh, has come out with a, um, a letter that gives permission to deacons to start wearing a clerical shirt. Now, a clerical shirt, you may notice a priest wears a clerical shirt. It's the the shirt, the black shirt with the Roman collar, okay? Because deacons are also clerics, we, we have the right to wear a, a clerical shirt. Um, until just recently, our bishop has asked us not to wear clerical shirts, and many of the deacons have had a discussion with him, and we've decided, the bishop has decided to offer um, guidelines for that, okay? so. If you see someone wearing a black shirt with the Roman collar, like you've seen for many, many years, like we've all seen forever, you'll know he's a priest. If you see someone wearing a gray shirt with the Roman collar and a name tag that says deacon, <laughs> he's a deacon. Okay? Now, um, there's occasions because, um, you know, Deacons live in the, in the uh, world, they live in the world and also in the clergy. Um, there's occasions when we would wear a clergy shirt and when we would not. So most of the time you're going to see me wearing my shirt with the deacon cross on it. But occasionally you'll see me wearing a maybe, I don't know, I don't even own one yet. Um, but you might see me wear a gray clergy shirt with the clergy collar and name tag. Um, funerals. Or maybe if, someone, if I'm helping someone prepare for a funeral or if I'm doing a funeral at a, at a funeral home, um, or some other, um, like a dress activity. Like, I wouldn't wear necessarily a shirt and tie anymore. I'd wear a, a gray clergy shirt with my name tag and the clergy collar, okay? So that's just saying that it goes into effect next week. That's the, the start date is, is April 20th, and Bishop wanted us to kind of do a little teaching moment on that. So you know, when you're walking along and you see a guy wearing a gray shirt, you don't call him father, you call him deacon. Easy enough. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. During the Easter season, we hear how the disciples encounter the risen Christ at different times and in different ways, all the while trying to understand the meaning of the resurrection. We too contemplate the implications of the resurrection and consider how we see the risen Lord in our lives. It helps us to gather as church where we can seek the presence of Christ as we worship in the assembly, in its ministers, in the word of God, in the holy sacrifice, and in the Eucharist. Let us pray that we may be better discern the Lord in our midst. Please stand for our entrance song is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah is our song. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. During these days of Easter, the Lord wishes to forgive our sins. Let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died to bring us salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus. You are the source of new life for all who put their trust in you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. 
But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. My lips and in my heart. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do, you, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a coast does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. So in my many years of sales, I was always taught you should answer the question before it's asked. And I know many of you know I was gone last weekend and on a retreat, and yes, it was a very good retreat. Okay, so you don't need to ask me on the way out the door. We had a great time. Uh, actually, my wife Mary and I were, were on the retreat. Mary was making the retreat, and I was on part of the spiritual team. So anyway, it was a great retreat, and what I liked about this retreat is it's, um, it's called Crucio. Crucio stands for, or, or, uh, Spanish, for a short course. It's a short course in Christianity, and how to live a life in Christianity. And what we learned is that we are part of a larger Christian community. And how do you live that life? of piety, study, and action in that Christian community. Somewhat similar to our readings today, and the readings that we hear in this first part of Easter, the Easter season is the early Christian community was coming together. And Peter was speaking about, um, hey, listen, some of you were ignorant. Now, he wasn't calling them ignorant stupid. He was calling them ignorant because they didn't really know about Jesus Christ and how he was made known to them, and how he rose from the dead. You see, if we get that fact in our hearts, we become joyful. We become filled with the Spirit, just like Peter was. And the Christian community was, was growing. 
And they're looking to help Peter, just like everyone else, they're looking to help people grow in Jesus' mercy and forgiveness. Like St. John talked about. Those who know the word of God and live his commandments are in Christ. Those who say they know Jesus but don't live in the commandments, those are not really people in our community. We might have run into some people like that. What I'm really trying to get at is we need to make sure that we're part of a Christian community. Now, Crisio is a great way to do it, but, but that's not the only way. We have a great Christian community here, a family of believers. We get together every week and celebrate that resurrection. We also have a smaller community here of people who serve the poor. We call helping hands that we give out food. We serve about 70 families a month with some food. And that doesn't just happen, right? There was a group yesterday that went up and helped out with a different food pantry and came and unloaded the trucks. And there's people that, that pick up food during the, during the month and bring it and stock our shelves. And then we have distribution, um, which is not gonna be this week, it's next week, okay? But, um, we distribute this food to all these families and we have a group of people that come and do that. It's beautiful to see how everyone serves the poor. We also have a community of people who come to study the Bible on Tuesday nights. And this is open to everyone, by the way. It's not a closed community. But we come and sit and study and listen to the Word of God. We're, we're studying about Jesus in the Eucharist and in the Mass right now. The Christian community is different than in the world. We try to not be ignorant about that resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it's our duty as a Christian community to take that message out to the world. Just like Peter was trying to talk to the Jews. Say, listen, Jesus rose from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. We saw this. That's why we're sitting here today if we expect others to be sitting in these pews in 50 and 100 and 2,000 years from now, we need to be those witnesses as well. We need to become part of the community and share the good news of the resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now to the Lord, raising our voices to him in prayer. For the church, may we be witnesses to the risen Lord, revealing his presence in our acts of mercy and love, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Bishop Rickon's monthly intention, may young men and women of our diocese have the courage to discern a life of priesthood or religious life and find support in their families, friends, and parish communities, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of those in authority, may they pursue justice, right the wrongs that persist, and lift up those who are oppressed, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are ill, imprisoned, homeless, or neglected, May they and those who care for them recognize the Lord in each other, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are on our parish prayer list, especially Joe Sell and Terry Fusick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Lawrence Calise, for whom we offer the prayer of this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in the prayer for vacations. Good Saint Joseph, with Mary you raised Jesus the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. St. Joseph, pray for us. Lord our God, hear our prayers and our cries to you in our time of need. Guide our steps so that we might know and love you all the days of our life and live with you forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given our cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring 
may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land and every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing this, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Martin of Tours and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Jesus Christ, the Lord God, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, spread life to the whole world. Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be ever on thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be ever on thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be ever on thine. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a couple of announcements. First of all, we have a little uh, gift for Lorelei and a certificate. Lorelei, come on up here. Come right up here and stand up here so everybody can see your pretty dress. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. So we have a certificate and a little gift for her from the Catholic Council of Catholic Women. So go ahead, you can sit down. So after Mass, we'll have our prayer team up here, but they're probably going to want pictures with Lorelei, so the prayer team will meet a little over here. Okay? This morning, anybody who has prayers, if you need a prayer for anything, I'd like our team to pray with you, come on up um, with that. Don't forget we have adoration on Wednesdays from 1 until 8 p.m. Uh, and I think that's all I have this week. All right. Uh, if you are a daily mass goer at Sacred Heart, there will not be mass this Thursday. Wednesday afternoon, I'm flying to EWTN to record some shows, and then I fly back Thursday afternoon. So... Uh, no Mass Thursday at Sacred Heart. The Lord be with you. And be with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.